On today's episode of Crystal and Corked, I am talking to somebody who I just adore, and that's my California photographer, Marcy Bro. Make sure you follow her on Instagram, Marcy B R O W E underscore photo. We'll link to her. You know, she I've worked with her over these years for Crystal Media and Crystal and Corked photos, and she's always made me feel so comfortable and has brought my vision to life. And today she's talking about some of her tips to help businesses with their personal branding. We also talk about how to feel more confident in front of the camera, whether you're getting photos done. And even if it's like a selfie that you're taking, it doesn't have to be professional photos, like just how to feel more confident in front of the camera for photos or videos. We also, this conversation actually has a lot of layers. I love the different the different channels and roads that we went down together while we're drinking our fabulous glasses of red wine. She has one of my favorite wines. I mean, she is just such a wealth of information. She is such a good human. We share some good tips. She shares some good tips at the end too about how to just live a little bit more of a sustainable life and how to run your business that way as well as personally. So I can't wait for you to listen. Definitely go check her out on Instagram if you're local. Hire her. She's the best. And let's dive into this episode. Hello, I'm Crystal Vilkaitis. I'm a curious, wine-loving entrepreneur who loves to learn and have open and honest conversations. Join me and my amazing guests as we talk about all sorts of relatable business and life stuff. It's my goal that you'll have fun, learn something new, and get inspired. Wine is not required, but is recommended. This is Crystal Uncorked. Marcy, welcome to Crystal Uncorked. I'm thrilled you're here. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me, Crystal. It's such an honor. I know. This is going to be a really fun conversation. I, You are my... Calif- I have to say California photographer. I know. Because I I've, know. You don't want to sound like you're cheating. I get it. I know. I know. <laughs> I do have my Colorado photographer. Um, and we have worked together over these several years. And I'm so excited to talk about personal branding today and building your brand brilliance. Yep. I mean, unleash. No, unleashing your branding yep. Unleash it and then build it or build it and then unleash it, you know. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I love it. Um, But before we dive in, what are you drinking? Okay. So I got a wine with you in mind because I know that you are a fan of Joel Gott. So I'm drinking a Joel Gott Cabernet. Oh my gosh. Excellent. What about you? Um, Well, I have this. You're going to have to try since you're local here in Southern California, have you been to Burtek Winery yet? No. Is that in Encinitas? Okay. Yes. Okay. I heard you talk about it on another episode. Yes. I'm a big fan and I'm a member of their wine, so I'm always fully stocked. And actually, Dominic Burtek is going to be on the show in a couple of weeks, which is fun. Um, but I have a Syrah and uh, it's delicious. So cheers to our awesome wines. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Now, as I was preparing for this, I was like, I feel like there's a lot of things we can actually talk about because you are a business owner. I have a lot of curiosity of being a photographer, the people that you're working with. Um, You also have such an interesting life where you and your husband pack up like you guys were living in Mexico this summer, right? The whole summer. Yes. Yes. So we, cause he's a teacher. So we have a lot of time to play with. And as you know, being an entrepreneur, you have a lot of freedom with your schedule, but the hard part is actually like utilizing that freedom and taking that time. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Well, you guys kind of are forced to, I feel like with the summertime, but like not forced, I mean, allowed to, there's that extra space, but you guys yeah. really take advantage of that time, yes. which I love seeing and following yes. along with. It's uh, so cool. Um, but we are talking about personal branding today. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of experience from a branding perspective, being a photographer and really just helping people's voice and brand come to life. And um, I mean, I've certainly experienced that both in Crystal Media and Crystal Uncorked. Right. And so I would love for you to just share a little bit first about you and when you got started with your photography business. And then we're going to dive into some, some personal branding stuff. 
Sure. So I got started, um, like a lot of people, it was a hobby, but I was given a little bit of a nudge because my grandfather made his living as a photographer. So it was very much in my family. He had a lot of cameras around and I ended up using one of his cameras to learn. I took a class in high school and then a class again in college. So it was really, it was a hobby. And I discovered early on that I really liked photographing people. So that was that was my love as a photographer. And there was just a whole lot of years where it was really um, just something I did. Not, not, I really didn't even earn a lot of money at it uh, because I had a corporate job. I got a degree in advertising. So I graduated and then went right to work uh, in the field of advertising and marketing. And then the photography was just a side hustle. And then eventually I turned it into my main gig. So I have you know a big, strong corporate background and also kind of the entrepreneurial background. So I think that's kind of a great blend of, okay. of experiences. Oh, for sure. Now, when you went off and and said, I'm going to totally commit to photography, like, was that a scary move or exciting? Like, yeah. (laughs) So yeah, yeah, it was scary because I was making pretty good money. I worked in, um, I, I worked for a company doing their, um, marketing and they had a huge, they had a huge budget. And I was at the point in my career where I was making pretty good money, but then I got together with the guy that's my husband and I saw the way he lived his life, and it was mm. it was interesting because he's someone I I knew from um, years ago. We both went to high school together in New Jersey, and then reconnected later in California. So I was getting to know him again as an adult, and by this time he had um, he had had a career as a Marine, and he left that to become a teacher. So as I was getting to know him. I was so inspired because he's the kind of person that like squeezed every ounce out of his vacations. He would go Mm. from high school graduation, get in his car or get on a plane and he would gone all summer. And here I am working the corporate job and I'm like, this is not the right decision. Like here you are having all this fun. So for me, I was like, how can I architect my life so I can really enjoy the lifestyle that he has um, inspired me to do? So really it was scary. And I think there's a lot of people out there that have done the same thing. And um, I had built up a little bit of a nest egg when I knew I was going to leave. I had 10 months of a runway. I had 10 months before I knew I was going to give my notice. So I had been saving money. At that time, I was living in Los Angeles and I was doing a long distance relationship with Rick and Oceanside. And then I just, I left, I left, gave my notice and started building a photography business. And I had moved to a new town. I didn't know hardly anybody. So yeah, it was scary in the first years. um, I think I made like $6,000 $6,000 my first year in business. So it was right. just like very demoralizing. Um, but I gave myself three years. I said, I'm going to do this mm. slow and intentionally. So that I think was the mental um, capacity that I needed because I knew I was not going to kill it overnight. I had a lot to learn and just so much, so much to learn. And in hindsight, it's almost like, would you agree that it's almost nice in hindsight to have um, the rose colored glasses because you probably wouldn't do half of the entrepreneurial stuff if you knew how it was. And and it's an emotional journey. So yeah, I'm glad that I didn't. (laughs) It so is. I mean, if people are like, this is actually what it looks like, are you still ready to do it? I mean, not that I would say no, but I do think that some would. And I do think that you approach it a little bit differently. Like that night, naivety is that the yeah. right word like being naive yeah. really yeah. can help in that sense um it does. yes and i love that you gave yourself like you had such a nice runway and you gave yourself 3 years like there wasn't this pressure that i'm going to become oceanside's top photographer in 1 year right. and i'm going to hustle my ass off and do whatever i can and kill myself over it like you said i'm committing right. to this and i have 3 years which gives you that space to yes. breathe and expand and kind of figure out what you want to do and who you want to work with and yes. and did you ever do weddings and other type of photography or has it mostly been like 
one like brand. Your, yeah. So when right. I first started, I did a lot of family photography. So the traditional uh, family photo shoot, and I never did weddings. Um, I did a few here and there, but nothing that I ever um, marketed. And so I, I didn't know I was going to do branding photography right out of the gate, but it became very clear to me that my passion and my interest was still in the, um, I, you know, I had this, I had this degree in advertising and I loved marketing. I got to do some really high level marketing, um, w- when I worked in corporate. So that became very obvious to me pretty soon into the photography journey that one, it was more interesting to me Two, it was just uh, fit in my wheelhouse. And three, I got to work with a lot more interesting people because I love family photo shoots. I mean, it's really fun, um, but it's not, you're having very different conversations when you're wrangling toddlers <laughs> versus uh, talking with entrepreneurs. So I was right. just like so excited to really build that branding side and that, but that took us some time to figure out where I was going to land. Um, so then I did kind of niche down a little bit into branding and that's, that's been for several years now, that's been my only focus. Awesome. I remember when we first found you, I had Erica who was on my team, like do some research of local photographers and she showed me people's portfolios. And I was just like, I love Marcy's photos. Like I just felt like there was something special and unique to them where it was more like, it told more of a story and it felt more like human and connection versus just a headshot. And so then when you came into the office and just, you had such great questions and it was really about the brand and the feeling and the messaging. And I was like, this girl knows what she's talking about. Like, because it is so much more than just that headshot when we're talking about personal branding, Mm -hmm. which is a great kind of transition, you know, prepping for this, I I mentioned you obviously social media and mm-hmm. my company Crystal Media does social media education and it is like one of the number one platforms if not the number one that you know to really build the relationship and get reach in front of new people and maintain that relationship with people and you really it it takes so much more than just like snapping a photo of yourself you know yes. like there's so much more and I really feel like you have to have the humanized element to have social really produce. And that's where we're seeing like these influencers just take off because they're themselves, they're real, they're raw, and there's a human attached to it. Brands can still do it, but I think it's kind of harder if it's just a faceless brand. Right. But I, you know, I would I would love to hear from you. Like, what are I know that you teach this. Mm-hmm. What are, and you kind of have like a four part series that I, you know, saw on your website that I loved and was like, this would be great to talk about. So will you share with us, like how, how does somebody unleash their branding brilliance? Right. Well, I think you are a perfect example of someone that has evolved and morphed with their their brand. So I think, um, you know, just kind of using you as the um, the example, r- really, it starts with a conversation. So the first time that we had met, you were looking to um, put yourself out there with um, your crystal media side of your offerings. And so with with everyone that I work with, it really starts with a conversation. And that it's basically me interviewing the person because I have to get in their head and I ask them questions like, how do you want to be seen? How do you want people to talk about you when you're not in the room? Who's your ideal person? client or audience that you're trying to connect with. And then really the um, end result is that I'm trying to help people look the part that they, they want to look as if, you know, some people have a vision of where they want to go. And so really I need to help get them uh, create the vision for them, telling the story and creating, creating the vision. So I have a process that I do with my clients and I take them through this interview process and then what they get in return is they get a branding guide. So I need to do this in order to plan the photo shoot because everyone's different. And that's the whole point of the brand is that you want to stand out from other people doing similar things from you. So the um, person that I'm working with, they get this guide that's a result of me interviewing them pre-photo shoot. And then they have this document they can refer to with 
all this language that they can use or ideas of how to position themselves. And so essentially, it's really just like, how can I market this person? So everything I do has kind of this marketing spin on it. And every person's different. And some and the people that have this great vision for themselves are kind of fun and easy to work with. Like you are in that category. And I'll circle back to that. But some people don't know there. That's a little trickier because some people like let's just take um, real estate agents. And I know Dustin is a realtor. There's a lot of realtors. Uh, so it is certainly not the kind of um, occupation that you you have if that is like rare and unique. So right. when I work with people like that, it takes a lot more um, digging and really kind of trying to find that angle that makes them different. Uh, but for you, what was really fun is you had a vision um, for your crystal uncorked um, and for your crystal media, too. But I'm really thinking of our more, more recent photo shoot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you came with all of these ideas and you had this like really clear sense of where you wanted your platform to go. So that's incredibly fun because then I get to just take that vision and make it happen. And I'm laughing because I'm just picturing you uh, sitting, you showed me an <laughs> example of a one photo of like the the hot mess. And it's so funny that um, Pauline was there for your photo shoot. She was just like helped helping in the background yeah. with this like crazy um photo idea you had but i love that because you had yeah. you had a clear vision and right. um that helps with your brand it really helps oh my god we i want to just touch on that and anybody that's listening to this you'll have to go over to my website to see these photos and i've been saving this it's like my favorite photo i think that you took it's so good. Um, and the videos are so funny because it's like, I'm just getting just to explain it. Anybody on audio, like I'm sitting in a chair. Marcy is photographing me. Obviously Pauline is behind me. She's not in the shot, but she is taking these big, um, like eight by 10 kind of cardboard, white cardboard, and just like making it rain on me. Yep. And um, I saw this picture of just all these things come crumbling down. But this woman in the picture was just like, she's still there. She's got it. She's bold. She's fine. And here we are, like Pauline's doing this. And I'm just getting hit in the head, hit in the head, hitting in the shoulder, hitting the wine glass. And I have to keep a straight face. And I'm just like, oh my God. I hear Pauline laughing. Like we're all trying to keep it together. I know we only had a couple of takes because there's only so many yeah. times you can do a shot like this. Um, right. So I was trying so hard to be behind the camera, not laughing because I didn't want right. you to crack and lose <laughs> character. But it was really funny. But that, like, that's the perfect example of someone like you, that's just so clear on, you know, and you had the opportunity to kind of um, rebrand yourself because this podcast and this platform, it really allows you to tap into something different than you allow mm. yourself to with the crystal media, because, you know, this one's a little more um, raw. You're going to drop some F-bombs here and there, and you're talking right. about things. You're a lot more vulnerable. And, mm. you know, whereas crystal media, you have to be the expert and you're the one like driving the bus. And this right. really allows you to show the other side of yourself, which I really love that you've kind of uh, rebranded yourself. I shouldn't say rebranded, but um, I think you've opened up a different side of your brand here. Yeah. Uh, so totally. that's really, it's really been really fun to watch your journey because you're really killing it with like putting yourself out there in like such a great, real, oh. authentic way. Thank you, Marcy. I mean, I can't tell you how much I know you listen to the show and I say this on the show a lot. Like, I truly love doing this show. I think I've said it three times to Dustin today alone. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God, I love doing this show. Um, and what's Wait, kind please, of interesting. Please. Yeah, go ahead. I just guess, do you find it to be a distraction from your other whole business? Like, I'm curious about that because you have, you have people that listen to this podcast might not realize that you're running a full team of people. You, you know, you're, you full on. So right. like, how does that work for you? <laughs> well, it's, 
it can be a lot. I mean, I'll be honest. Some, some days are better than others. And there's this kind of like frustration I have a little bit because I, I love it so much and I want to be doing so much more with it. Like I have a lot of ideas and even just showing up more on social media, which I teach at the other business, you know, like I just get this frustration. I'm not doing what I could be. And sometimes that keeps me up at night And then there's also these thoughts of like, I should stop doing it because work... Because right now, Crystal Media is really busy, like the busiest we've been all year. Mm -hmm. And the busy... Like I've needed to be more involved too. I've worked hard at delegating to the team, but we're really focusing on scaling the business right now. And it is just requiring more of my time. And so it's like, gosh, should I pretend like we have seasons now. So season one of Crystal and Cork is done. And then I take a break and I'll come back. But I just feel so strongly like I don't want to take a break. I want to keep going. I need to figure out like, just make it work. Because I get so much out of it. I learn. I like it gives me more energy for everything else that I'm doing. But there are certainly those times and, you know, in knowing like I could be doing more, you kind of feel like, oh, I'm spending all this time doing these interviews. Like I'm not doing the best I could market it, you know? So there's, there's an element of that, but it does give me a lot of joy. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. And I, and this is very much a selfish reason because for you to say that you feel like you're not doing enough and you feel like you should be doing more for both of your businesses. I look at what you do and I think you're doing a phenomenal job because, uh, you know, I'm like, if Crystal feels like she's not doing enough, uh, then I'm just going to like be happy with what I'm doing because I constantly feel like I'm not doing enough. So, um, you know, and I hear that's a recurring theme I hear from you on your podcast. So, you know, it's it's interesting just to hear you say that because on the outside, I feel like it looks like you have your shit together and you have it all figured out and you're doing all the right things and you have a team in place. But, you know, thank you for being vulnerable and, um, you know, admitting, admitting that you might not necessarily like feel like you're doing enough. (laughs) Mm, Well, you know, that is one thing that I promised myself going into this is that I will be vulnerable and I will be open because I felt like I didn't, you don't always get that. Like I go to a lot of business conferences or used to, you know, kind of before COVID. And it was so much of like the six figure launch and seven, seven figure business and all of these things. And I'm like, you know, can we talk about like some of the hard times and yeah. like how long it yeah. did take you to get there? How much money you're spending to get a six figure business? Like it's, yeah. And, yeah. The, six, and the six figure business is, um, you know, that's not like that difficult to do, but don't you find that the more someone talks about how much money they're making or how much their launch went, the, uh, I find I shouldn't, I shouldn't loop you into this. Let me reframe this. Um, I find that like, so that's a red flag for me when I hear Mm -hmm. people talking about how much money they're making, or if they're standing with the Lamborghini in the background and they're like, this is my Lamborghini and you can have one too. If you follow my method, um, I can't stand that. It's just, and I, I think that maybe we're moving away from that. I'm not really sure, but that to me is a red flag. And I'm just like, you just became a total, um, cheese ball in my mind. And I, I just think your authenticity just went down. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, I'm glad that you were having this conversation. I mean, this kind of off the cuff, unplanned conversation, because I actually got really caught up in that stuff. Like, uh, I don't know, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I definitely like lost my voice and my vision along the way. I think it's very easy to get caught up in that because people, it's all marketing. We know that, right? It's all messaging and marketing and the lifestyle that you could have and all this stuff. And I got kind of carried away in it. But I'm grateful for it because it gave me that perspective and to ask better questions of myself of like what I really want and not being so like um, naive of what other people are doing and what they're selling. But Marcy, what if somebody came to you and was like, I need photos. I rented a jet for the day and a Ferrari for the day. And I want to like look like hot shit, like, and really just what would you do? Yeah, I would probably work with them because my goal is to 
create people's vision that they have for themselves. And if that's the vision, now, if they were unethical or I felt slimy, I wouldn't. But if, um, you know, if somebody was just being a fake and a phony and maybe they had um, a bigger agenda that felt right to me, I would totally do it. And because, you know, for me, there's a lot of times people come come to me and they have ideas and, uh, you know, it's not really my role to be like, well, um, I don't really right. think that lands that well. Sometimes I'll nudge them in different directions, but honestly, if they have, if that's their vision and they're tied to it, then my job, if they're paying me, my job is to create that vision for them. Yeah, totally. I mean, if they were like, here's what I want to do this, you know, Lamborghini and jet and all this, but you know, can I, can you work with me on price? Can it be half off? And like, you know, like all this stuff, that that might be a little bit of a flag too, but you're right. Like you're just bringing these visions to life and through working with you, this is one of the reasons I love working with you. You do ask those questions to help. You've made me think like deeper Mm -hmm. about my businesses of really, what is it that I want? There's so much more than, than standing in front of the camera and smiling. Like there's just so much more. So when you have somebody like that realtor that you were talking about, Mm -hmm. who, you know, there's a ton of them, how do you really separate? Like, what are some of your things that you walk people through to get to that other side? Sure. I'll use an example that just, I just photographed a woman recently. Um, and she is in the mortgage industry, but she's getting her real estate license. So she's, um, she's, she's in the real estate industry, but she's crossing into being a realtor. And she was re- she was one of those people that was really stuck with how to differentiate herself. So what um what kind of percolated to the surface when we were having this conversation, I was asking her about okay, what's so she lives in Oceanside and which is where you and I live. And so if people are listening or watching and they don't live in Oceanside, Oceanside is a town that has um a military base, but it's on the beach and it's kind of the last um, the last chunk of land between all this beautiful, valuable beachfront real estate and a marine base that's not going anywhere. So Oceanside is like the last spit of land that is um, to be developed. And I'm mentioning this because um, Oceanside has a really gritty edge. It has has a real mix, I should say, of people um, that love the beach and have money. And then there's like this gritty side. So it's a very um, complex town. So when Mm -hmm. I was talking with her, um, I was asking her about, did she grow up in Oceanside? And she said, "Um, no, but she's raised her kid here for the last 18 years. And she knows this town really well. And so what, what came out of this conversation with this realtor was, I said, you know, you, that's your secret sauce. I said, you're the person, it sounds like you're the person that is going to help a buyer or seller know exactly what neighborhoods are right for them. Cause you know, this town in and out, you've raised your, your kid is a senior in high school. You know about the schools, you know, you know, the nitty gritty, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly. And she was like, well, I don't want to market just to Oceanside. And I said, you don't have to market just to Oceanside. You can be more broad geographically. However, if you're doing a marketing campaign or the realtors love to do their mailers or, you know, they have certain things that they're coached to do in the industry. Um, So I said, when you're doing an Oceanside specific campaign, really embrace the fact that you've seen this town through the good, the bad and the ugly. And you're you're going to be honest. And I think that was something that didn't occur to her. But, you know, other other realtors, for example, I have um, I have um, someone I've worked with and she lives in Carlsbad, which is the neighboring town to Oceanside. And she wants to really focus on marketing to her neighbors. So for her, um, I was like, okay, well, what, you know, what do you do? How do you know? You're, she's like, well, my neighbors don't even know me because I walk my dog all the time. And it was this gorgeous, like Goldie Doodle dog. She's like, oh. they just know the dog. I'm like, well, there is your marketing. You're going to be in the photos with your dog. And yeah. that's you're, you know, when you market to your neighbors, they'll be like, oh, that's the dog's mom. <laughs> yes. Just finding the nuggets like that, like really the right. things that people might not even know is their magic and turning it into something they can really use because then they can speak from an authentic place. They don't have to try to be something that they're not. And if you give people um, 
a, a niche. You don't want to be too broad. You don't want to say, I work with everybody. You really want to say, um, I would, I can work with everybody, but here's who I love working with. Um, and people ask me that about my business all the time is they're like, well, I, I, do you work with men? I don't see a lot of men, um, you know, when you're putting out your work. And I said, yeah, of course I work with men, but I market to women. So really, I'm intentional about attracting women like you into my business and into my life. But of course, if there's men that come along, I'm going to work with them if they're the right fit. But they're not they're not my marketing demographic. Right. I love that. So I mean, that's such a great point. I think about your Instagram and it is I can so tell like if I go to your Instagram, who your perfect customer is Mm -hmm. and who you really want to attract. But that doesn't mean like if you shot somebody else and um, a a guy, you have that capability, but I love that you're very strategic on what you're posting to represent that for you. And, you know, I feel like businesses or entrepreneurs can have this fear of being too niche. Like it's like, no, I, but I want to work with everybody or I don't want to, you know, exclude anybody. And I'm brand new, especially if you're new, there's like that scarcity mindset that you don't want to exclude anybody. But I'll just say like, Crystal Media is a very niche business where we work with independent mom and pop retail shops. And technically, we could even be more niche where it could just be pet stores and that's it or just gift shops, right? And so we've thought like, do we open up and say we work with small businesses? But that really changes the messaging and and so I, but there's that fear sometimes of like, oh, we're too niche. It's too niche. But I will tell you, I just really feel like that is something that is what does set you apart to your point mm-hmm. of really being clear, like who you want to work with and can best serve mm-hmm. and like trust that, right? Like yes. moving forward and market to that. It's so critical. Yes. And it, it's, it's so, it's so true. And I've known, you know, when I talk about what you do when you're in, in the crystal media side, I always say she's social media for retailers. And, yeah. you know, I guess the mom and pop is even more of, um, a way, cause you're not, you're not working for like Best Buy, you know, you're working for right. the, the people that are in charge of their own marketing for their, um, for their location. And that I think is genius because yes, if someone came along and they worked, um, you know, they were like, a sh- um, I don't know, like esthetician. Yeah, you could help them, but you're not marketing to that person. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, I love your example with the realtor because you probably know we are in escrow on our house here. I know. I'm so I'm happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> I know. I'm like, remember we talked about going to privateer like years ago. Yeah. And sitting on the patio. I feel like you do that a lot. I went there once. I'm like, this place is great. Marcy yep. recommended this great place. We just did not get to spend enough time together, unfortunately. Uh, I so hope to you, see you, you, though. I know, but yeah. when are you moving? Like, all right, so, and okay, uh, I just watched the episode where you were really in a state of ambivalence about whether you're going to sell or rent. So, did, to, right. you're renting, you sold your house. I would, I would, so sell, we sell, went sell. a totally different direction and we sold it. And why I bring that up is like, we had these people who were seeing our house. Obviously, we had an open house and we've got people walking through here and we had a couple of offers. And I'm like, I just not to sound like elite or any like um, bragging. I don't know why I feel like I have to say that, but we really do live in a great neighborhood in Oceanside. Like it is a little higher end. Yes. It's it's safe. It's nice. It's wider streets. It's bigger yes. homes. You, you have nice a, neighbors too. That makes that nice. makes a huge difference. Yes. Yes. I mean, they're basically like all retired neighbors. I definitely Perfect. am the youngest owner in this neighborhood, but like it's so safe and quiet and it's a gorgeous neighborhood. And mm-hmm. we had um, the people who are actually buying our house to put the offer in are from Chino Hills. And I'm like, does the agent understand this neighborhood? Like yeah. what I want people to really understand because we lived across the street and it's the same area, but it was a different neighborhood and it was a very different feel than what you get here. Yeah. And if you don't have these agents that really understand those areas. So my whole point is like the lady you were working with, that's a great unique value proposition. You're right. You're you. Yes. Or you yeah, yeah. She's going to be um, honest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that builds a lot of trust. And so that might mean like, it's mostly what you're marketing to is Oceanside. But I think that you'll have that phone ring more when exactly. people are looking like, 
that credible source, what you know, what you do, and don't be afraid to yes. move into that, especially if you feel like it's narrow. Exactly. There's a lot and, of business. You know, and, and so not to not to beat this subject to death, but uh, to to you know to put a finer point on this. When I first started my business, I did, um, I still do a ton of networking, um, but I was yeah. in this networking group called BNI and we, um, oh, they, too. oh, okay. <laughs> yep. So they teach you how to network and they, um, this sticks in my head every, every week when you meet with this group, as you know, you have to stand up and you do your ask, you ask your team of referral partners, how they can send you a, re a referral. And they, they always said, be specific. Say, I'm looking for uh, a mom and pop retailer that is growing on social media and has um, just started being more active on Instagram. Boom. Yep. That's your that's your ask because someone you're gonna think about. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, let me let me think. As opposed to like, I want anyone that wants to do social media. You're like, well, then that person's you're gonna go right out of their head. But the next yep. time they're at their favorite boutique, they'll be like, ah, Crystal wants this connection. So the more specific, the better. Oh, for sure. And that applies to your social media content. Because one thing I hear all the time from our retailers is I don't have time. And I was just saying this too, like, it's so hard to do what you want to do. But like, there will be retailers who haven't posted in months. And yeah. I think what a lot of businesses struggle with is they aren't clear on the specific ask of the yeah. audience and how they can serve. Because if you get really clear, it is easier to create that content for those people online. Yeah. Whereas if you're just like big and broad, you're like, well, what do I talk about today? It's the same thing I talked about yesterday. Like you can go deeper and just add so much more value, which will really help you stand out. Yes. Um, yeah. Now I have to ask, because speaking of my mom and pops, like one of the things that I teach them a lot, like we really try to get them to go live on Facebook or Instagram, like really use video. It's such a strong tool. Hmm. There is a lot of insecurities with people being on camera mm -hmm. and to where I have had several retailers cry mm -hmm. because they overcame that fear. It was mm -hmm. like, it was holding me back and you always talked about doing it. And I was like, I can't imagine, but I just did it anyways. And now I'm seeing the results and I overcame that and I can do it and I'm empowered and I just feel like you probably experience that because you're behind the camera. Like, what do you, I mean, I'm kind of yeah. like, Ooh, what, yeah. Do you have, okay. I get yeah. where you're going and yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, I see every insecurity. So what I always like to say, and it's a terror, it's terrible sentiment, but it's so true because it, it's really, um, for the women in this audience, I, um, I say, if you want to know what a woman does not like about herself, just listen, because she's going to tell you. And it's really, I, um, I, every time somebody starts a photo shoot, like, oh, they tell me the thing that they don't like about themselves. Cause they're like, okay, pay, either like pay attention to this. Cause I don't like the way my arms look, or I don't like when I smile a certain way. Um, but it's, I hear all the insecurities and, you know, really what I like to say before a photo shoot, if I can tell that someone's a little bit insecure, is I say, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to just set my camera up and I'll just kind of like do my little thing on my camera. And I say, while I'm doing this, I want you to take some breaths in. And I really want you to tap into the intention of why you're here. Mm. This is not about you. This is about your business. And I really want you to tap into the reasons that you booked this photo shoot and the intentions of what you're trying to build and all those things you told me. Because by the t this time, by the time I have them in front of the photo shoot and hair and makeup's done, they're, you know, I already know a lot about them. So yeah. it's a good reminder for people that when they're going live or they're putting themselves out there, it's really, it's not a vanity project. It's not about them. They're not a Kardashian. Okay. No one's going to expect them to look perfect. No one's going to expect right. them to be camera ready. They're not a news anchor. It's right. about what they're, it's about their store or what they're selling or the project they're doing. And I think if people just can shift that mindset and really get into the place of like, what am I here to do? What am I here? How am I here to serve? What am I here to, to sell or to share? Then it takes all the spotlight off of them. Um, because yeah, people get really freaked out with the camera and yes. oh, camera is not flattering. So when you have your um, phone pointed at you, 
it's so unflattering because this is, um, and I don't even have, I don't even have the new iPhone. I have an old one, but <laughs> the, the, this is a wide angle lens. Okay. So when you're putting this thing in front of your face, it is distorting your face. It's making things look bigger than they should be. It's, it's making things look warped. So mm. what you're seeing it, when you're turning it in selfie mode and you're doing the live, it's not what people see when they're physically in the room breathing the same air as you are. So just give yourself grace because it can be very unflattering. So just, just know that. <laughs> right. Well, and you, I feel like that's such great advice. It's not about them. It is about the people they want to serve and yeah. that, that intention and how I can help and really channel that before a photo shoot or before you go live. Like it does probably just take off that, pressure that we all put yes. on ourselves where, because we are the ones in front of the camera. But when you really think about the person on the other side, that delivers a completely different experience. And that can help people get really into themselves because I think that we can totally change, right? Like people can just change yes. and become very different in front of a camera. <laughs> very different. Yes. And, yeah. you know, always think when you're look when you're doing a live or a selfie or, or if you're at a photo shoot, really just look at that camera lens. Like you're looking at someone and have a conversation mm -hmm. with a person. And, you know, even th that person is probably not in the room, but talk to the camera like you would talk to your friend or your mom or your sister or your coworker, because you're going to speak differently if you're like, oh, um, um, I'm trying to um, uh, think of uh, what I like my script, you're going to get flustered. But if you're right. like, hey, Crystal, let me just talk to you about this thing. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because blah, blah, blah. You just then turn into a different energy space when you're talking to a person and not a piece of equipment. <laughs> oh my God, totally. I We talk about this even for writing emails, like think mm -hmm. of your perfect person. Mm -hmm. And if it was like Marcy, I love working with Marcy. She comes in all the time. She spends so much money. She brings all these people with her. I am writing this email for Marcy. Right. I am looking at this camera and it is Marcy. Like yeah. you just have to channel those people. And I do this actually. So I often get nervous when I speak in person. Like I love speaking and being on a stage, but I still get nervous. And I've talked sure. about this on the show. <laughs> and like, sometimes I'll feel it in the Uber on the way there, or if I'm walking there and I, what I do now, what part of my process is I think about my mom and mm. I'm just like, if my mama was in the audience, like she just loves me. She just is like, I'm so proud of you. doesn't matter what I'm talking <laughs> about. I could be saying total bullshit up there. And she yep. would just be like, I'm so proud, you know, yeah. like, so I just kind of try to channel her because I really want to speak as if I was talking to my mom, because I am more of that personal conversation. Like that's how I want to deliver a message. Yes. And so, and, and that's where I feel comfortable. So that is such good advice, Marcy, mm -hmm. such good advice. Love it. Um, I remember me, my, one of my insecurities working with you, I was like, I sweat a lot. So we got to make sure. <laughs> Make sure I'm yep. not sweating <laughs> or yep. that you yep. can't see. I think I even had toilet paper in some of our... I was going to say, yeah did, yeah. You, did you use the yep. maxi pad trick under the armpits? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We had uh, something that we put in there to help prevent... Yeah. My, I, uh... I remember that. I couldn't remember yeah. if we stuffed paper towels or yep. maxi pads. But then you were also wearing the, these really tight, um, like thin turtlenecks. So... <laughs> It's like, right. hopefully this doesn't show, but it, it didn't. But I know. I know. And it is really like nerve wracking. <laughs> the sweating happens. <laughs> oh my God. I sweat all the time. It's so weird. Like I will have a phone call, just a random, normal, fine phone call. And I'll go out and Dustin's like, whoa, <laughs> <You're> like really <laughs> sweating. <laughs> it's, so, yeah. it's so weird. So <laughs> side note. Um <laughs> Uh, okay. So what else, is there anything else? I mean, I feel like we could talk obviously a lot. There could be like, you probably have a long workshop about personal branding, but mm -hmm. are there one or two more tips that you want to leave the audience with as it relates to personal branding? Sure. Yeah. And I think, okay. So I think that, um, term personal branding has become kind of in vogue recently. And, you know, it could be it could be a little um, worn out by now. But essentially, really, truly, your personal brand is how you want people to think about you. And so 
for me, it all starts with um, your vision. And I'm a big self-development person. I love doing um, journal prompts or reading books that help um, really help me get clear. And I know you are too, Crystal. Like you're the kind of person that is always wanting to learn and grow and stretch. I think that growth mindset goes hand in hand with creating a personal brand because if you're if you're stuck and you don't know what your vision is for yourself or your business, I would really encourage you to either find um, find some personal development, ask people that are into it because there's no shortage of it. You go into the bookstore now and you go to the aisle of, uh, I don't even know what it's called. There's like business aisle and there's self-development and then there's, um, I don't even right. know all the labels they have. There's right. thousands of books on the shelves and then not to mention all the books you can get online. But if you're really stuck with how to create a personal brand, it all comes from just doing those self inquisitions, asking yourself questions. I'm a big journaler. So for me, I love to um, create visions. And, and you mentioned this in a previous podcast about how your vision, you were talking about how you kind of put like an intention out there, a vision for where you wanted to live. And you almost like threw it away and forgot about it. And then fast forward to the future, you, you woke up almost in a moment and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting in the vision I created for myself. And so right. that is the the underlying key to all of the personal branding is to really be clear on what you want to create for yourself and what you want to create for the world, how you want to give back, the impact you want to leave, because all of that is so much more meaningful than oh, I got to think of a a meme or a caption for this cute photo. Because for me, it's not just about creating cute photos. You're going to get photos that you like of yourself, but that's not the intention. The intention is to really promote what you're trying to put out there. Um, So I think that's, you know, that for me, that's it. It's just really putting the work into doing the self-development and it never, it never stops. I love I love doing the self development work. Um, yeah. So it really it really helps when you know where you're going because then you can you know help the path to get there just becomes easier. Totally. Well, and knowing those some of those questions in your journal prompt or eat, like that's something that I feel if you have time to just kind of like have an open space to think and just whatever comes to you or asking certain questions, even like how do I want to show up. Uh, mm-hmm. Who is my perfect? Like, who do I love working with? Yes. Why do I love working with them? Yes. You know, yes. like when they see my website, my social, my whatever, like, how do I want them to feel? And yes. like journal and think of those words and really create that can really help you get a little bit more clear on the actual, like the creative of all of it, the images and video and messaging. So yes. I love that. Yes. And you know, the, the perfect person concept is, is awesome. I do that all the time. When I journal, I have, I have a few different journaling processes I do, and I don't journal every day consistently. Um, and in fact, it freaks me out when people are like, this is my morning routine and I do it every day. And aren't I perfect? No, (laughs) I think let's leave a lot of room for for imperfection here. But when I do journal, sometimes I have this like gratitude process and I learned it from Tim Ferriss, who has a pretty, pretty extensive podcast. He's also an author of the four hour work week, et cetera, et cetera. But Tim Ferriss has a journaling process that he uses. And it starts with like, what am I grateful for? What would make today great? What what was a highlight from yesterday? What am I looking forward to for today? It just kind of, um, it gives you some tools. And so what I do in that process, when I say, what am I grateful for? I always write down the um, clients that I've had in my business that I'm like really grateful for. And it's fun because then I'll go back to my journal from like a year ago. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. Um, Cause I, I worked with this person and they've come and they've gone and now they're doing all these great things. But I'm like, oh my gosh, I was so grateful to work with um, all these people. And then look in in my future and my current, there's people just like that, that are just building and being attracted. So really the idea of creating uh, the energy around what you want to create and who you're thankful for and why you're thankful for them, the universe. And I don't mean to get too woo woo, but whoever's out there with these cosmic rays uh, (laughs) there, you know, the universe is matching your energy. So if you are, um, and I love this, I love the way this is framed by one of my, um, my favorite teachers, um, Esther Hicks, she talks about, um, she talks about the 
the concept that um, gratitude, she frames it and she uses the word appreciation. And the reason that she it really resonated, it hit home as soon as I heard her say why, it was like, boom, solidified in my head forever. Because she says that when you talk about being appreciative for something, if you think about appreciation from a monetary perspective, let's say your home appreciates in value. What that means is it's growing. So when you think about what you are appreciative for, it's like saying, dear creator, dear universe, dear karma, whatever. I really loved that this happened in my life. And I have more, please. So it's acknowledging as opposed to being grateful, which almost takes the um, responsibility of something and puts it puts it in a source outside of you. It takes the it takes the self responsibility out of. But if you're appreciative for what you have and what is working, you're appreciating and collecting and growing more of that. So when I heard that analogy, I was like, done. Thank you. Got it. I love that analogy. I'm appreciating everything. So, oh, you know, really that I that that really helps create more of what you want. Right. You're amplifying appreciation. I mean, it's like amplifying gratitude to get more. Like it's the yep. cycle of just filling more. And it's not like we're yep. limited. You know, no. there is unlimited no. amounts. Yeah. There's so much unlimited. And that's what I love. Um, you know, you mentioned this before that, you know, coming into things with the scarcity mindset, you know, that's really going to limit you. But if you are coming at things thinking, OK, well, you know what, there might be 500 people that are doing the same thing as me, but there's room for all of us. Uh, you know, right. really, there's there's just uh, there's just unlimited amount of resources. And just because you can't see them doesn't mean that they don't exist. Exactly. Yeah. And a big part of that is trusting, just trusting that it will mm -hmm. be there. And I recorded an episode today about that too. Like oh, just good. trusting. Yeah. It's so important. Um, I love that you brought up Esther Hicks too, because I love her and I only recently found her like YouTube channels really where I binge. Yeah, sure, sure. And, um, Old, like last year, it was really yeah. during quarantine, actually, it was a nice timing. But I, for some reason, I would listen mostly to her in my bath, I would have a bubble bath. Oh, with, my gosh, as, okay. You know, and like candles. And I just have to say, if anybody is looking for some of that self development, if you're mm. feeling off out of alignment, if you want it, if you're even if you're not, if you just kind of like want to further yourself and grow even more mm -hmm. and understand things differently, understand yourself differently, like check out Esther Hicks on YouTube. Yeah. Great content. She's, I think she's just the godmother of radical self, uh, just taking claiming and being responsible for your own life. Yes. That is, I think what she's brought to my life is really taking radical responsibility for everything that happens to my life. And, um, another, another person that I've started really listening to recently that's similar is, uh, Byron Katie. It's a woman um, that she sometimes goes by Katie. Okay. You know her, but she's the same thing. It's like, how are you telling yourselves these stories potentially that aren't even really true? How are you responsible for your own suffering? And, you know, my, my yoga teacher always says, you know, really the, um, yoga is to just relieve suffering because to be a human is to suffer. But if we can figure out how to suffer less, then that's where the joy comes in. And it's, you know, really as th at this point in my life, every time that I just take radical responsibility for how my, how everything needs to go, sometimes it hurts because I have to say, yep, I've been responsible. I, I have, I've created that dynamic or I wasn't really truthful or I've let this pattern happen too long. It kind of hurts. It's not, it's not, um, it, Cause it's like a little bit of a slap in the face to yourself. You're like, Oh, yep. I'm, I'm responsible for creating that. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it, it really helps you just get out of your own way. <laughs> yeah. When it does take you out of that suffering. I mean, if we don't ask those hard questions and really look at ourselves in the mirror and, and let the ego go and just be like, yeah. okay, what was that about? And what's happening here? And yeah, it can hurt. And sometimes you have to apologize to people and you're like, I did, I handled that wrong. I did that wrong. Like mm. all the things, but that's the only way that we really are growing and can provide more. And of course the whole saying like new levels, new devils. I do believe yep. that like, as you keep growing and evolving, um, yep. 
but yeah, I mean, excellent. I love Byron Katie. I started reading her book. Um, I, I don't, I think it's called the work or she yeah, talks about, I mean, the that's work. what she calls yeah. her process, the work. Yeah. So I don't know her, I don't her books. I'm like you, I like my YouTube videos. Cause then I can, yeah. um, I can, I, I do that in the morning when I'm getting myself ready, I'll put like a 20 minute Esther Hicks video on. Um, and I'll be like, all right, when the timer goes off, I'm done. So, yeah. but it's like, you know, kind of a passive thing you can do while you're doing something else. Totally. <laughs> yep. Driving, walking, all those things. Great resources. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, Marcy. Now, before we wrap up here, I do know that you are very involved in the green scene locally and mm-hmm. just also have a passion for sustainability, being more environmentally conscious. Do you have, and I know, look, we could probably do a whole other episode <laughs> about this, but like, rapid fire three to five ish tips or whatever you're feeling for a business or a person, whatever that looks like that can be more environmentally conscious. Oh, absolutely. And I think how you run your business is how you run your personal life. So these tips can um, just apply no matter where you are in your life. So first thing is um, just how how you're shopping. Like, are you buying things that are wrapped in plastic? Are you, are you buying things that aren't, um, aren't reusable? Just, just you're, you're responsible for how much you're, you're buying Buy just buy less shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. go. That's uh, the and then, quote. That's the quote. <laughs> and then also, um, really get clear on who you're voting for and what their policies are on the environment, because that there's, a, you know, as an individual, you can only do so much. A lot of it has to do with lobbyists and and lawmakers. So really get active in local government, um, all the way up to um, federal government, and um, just you know, just be. Be um, not afraid to just ask questions and ask people like your grocery store or, you know, if if you're in a retail environment where they're sourcing things. Um, and then for me, I um, really, really like to source things like, for instance, when I get uh, when I get my my photo um, lab when I print photos, they're a green lab. So I know that they, you know, everything that they've done to create these photo prints and books and albums and artwork, it's all done with the highest standards of green. So really just getting clear on your supply chain and your vendors. Um, but essentially just ask questions in, and really just buy less shit. Honestly, if I can make a bumper sticker that says buy less shit, that would be my <laughs> motto. Cause we just yeah. don't need all this stuff that we have. And I'm guilty of it too. I'm not reaching. It's, it's a reminder to myself, but you know, really just, um, just less is more (laughs) simple. Yeah. Right. Well, and I mean, now the world of Amazon, it's so convenient to buy stuff. Mm. So you're like seeing something on, on the TV or Instagram, your friend has something and it's just like, Oh, I'll get that too. And then you're never using it or like subscription boxes, which I think is a good business model. But some of these subscription boxes are, like you don't use half the shit in it. That makes and me cringe. The subscription box. Yeah. Um, I know you're in a retail environment, so I'm certainly not going to diss all subscription right. boxes. But I think sometimes things end up in those that um, maybe aren't packaged that ethically. But I do have a suggestion with Amazon because um, I love Amazon too. But you can actually save um, save environmental and human uh, resources if you don't choose ship it the next day. So if you buy something on Amazon, don't do it the next day unless you absolutely have to have it because it'll save the human toll and it'll save the um, logistics behind the scenes. So that's a really mm-hmm. easy, simple, low hanging fruit thing that we can do. Just don't get something immediately unless you need it because there is a lot of cost behind that that click of that button. Interesting. I never thought about that, but I mean, obviously you saying that makes sense. And most of the stuff that I feel like people are probably buying on Amazon, you can wait a day or two. You don't, you know, you don't need it. Two days versus five days. Like it's not like, it's not like it's going to take 12 weeks. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Great tips. And I don't mean to like put that at the end. Like it's not very important. It is so important. I I love talking about it. So thank you for, uh, for bringing it up. And I, I just, I love, I love 
the idea. And I don't think the world is hopeless. I know that there's a lot of news that's come out about um, the climate and everything, but you know, it's not hopeless. We're just, we have endless capacities for creativity and innovation. So I think the worst thing we can do is just get, um, get the fear that it's, it's a lost cause and nothing we can do will work because it's not true. We're just so creative as a human species. Oh, Amen. I so agree. And that does create so much innovation, which is very exciting for us. So yeah, we're not hopeless. We are powerful. And there are so many solutions, which I just so agree. Um, Marcy, how can people connect with you? Instagram, right? Marcy Bro. Marcy Bro underscore photo. photo. Yep. Instagram. And I have a website and I have on my website, it's marcybro.com. And my website has a brand planning guide. So if you're kind of curious about what your brand is, it's a workbook um, that I have put up on my website. You can download it for free and you can figure out what your personal brand is and how to use it when you're putting yourself out there. Love it. Okay. Anybody who is starting a business or wanting to change the brand, or if you're feeling off at all, or a friend who's starting something, I feel like there's been so many new businesses that have been created over the past year and a half with COVID shutdown. People are evolving. So that is a good resource. Thank you so much. We'll link to that. Marcy, I loved this conversation. It flew Thank by. You. This is awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your time. Thank you for having me. It was a true honor. And I am just cheering for you every time I see you know, how much you're evolving. I just want to give you so much credit for, for being a light and a beacon to other women, other business owners. So keep doing what you're doing, girl. Oh, thank you so much. I love it. I love it. And I love you. Cheers one last time here. Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) All right, everybody. Be sure that you follow Marcy. Go check out her free download. If you are in the Oceanside, Southern California area, and you need some new photos, she is your girl. She is my favorite. I will miss her dearly. Maybe we can sneak in some, some California shoots when I come back to visit. And uh, everyone, I will see you on the next See You. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to see pictures of you listening to the show, a screenshot of your favorite episode and or your favorite wines. Share them with me. Just follow and tag at Crystal Uncorked. I can't wait to see you there. All right. I'll see you on the next See You.